Okay, then thank yeah. you again, and uh, we have to um, we have to continue, unfortunately, with the program. Okay. Uh, but there, um, if we still have time left in the end, we will have a discussion round with the speakers in the front. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome the next speaker, which is uh, Professor Christoph Alexiou from Erlangen, and he has a little bit uh, chairman unfriendly long title, um, but it's about um, neutron uh, capture therapy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this nice introduction. I would like to introduce neutron capture therapy with boron containing magnetic nanoparticles. This is the first pilot trial. We, uh, due to the fact that um, especially neutron capture therapy was discussed in the last decades very heterogeneously, we hope that we find a possible solution to really improve this exciting treatment modality. Now, uh, what I'm leading, I do lead the section of experimental oncology and nanomedicine. You see the uh, co-workers of mine with the white shirt. Uh, what we are doing in Erlangen is, uh, oops, sorry. What we are doing in Erlangen, sorry, is that um, we are synthesizing nanoparticles, iron oxide nanoparticles. We do characteriz uh, characterization. We do address nanotoxicology. This is a big issue. We have heard a lot of today of Scott McNeil, a co-worker of mine, whereas uh, Christina Janko was in, in, in NCL. He learned a lot. So it was very exciting uh, concerning the techniques they have there. We are testing biological mechanism, and uh, we do in preclinical animal studies. Dr. Lewis here and co-workers of mine, and uh, which is a very interesting possibility in our unit is that we have a GMP facility in the pharmacy department of our clinic. So therefore, we can now transfer this lab scale um, uh, synthesis uh, into clinical trials. So we have the infrastructure for this, and this is very um, uh, useful and necessary to do translation. Now, uh, what is um, the purpose of uh, bore neutron capsule therapy? If you make a neutron uh, irradiation on the bore uh, atom, you have then, sorry, it's dark, you have an alpha radiation and you have a gamma radiation. When the alpha radiation is a very, has a small radius, it's only very few micrometers. And if you do uh, make this um, irradiation, then you can specifically um, cure or treat cancer tissue. And, uh, but the problem was in the past, if you do apply boron uh, intravenously, you have a systemic distribution in the body. And if you then do neutron, uh, neutron uh, flux um, irradiation, uh, then you have the problem that you have severe negative side effects. For example, in Germany, we have uh, two or three possibilities, reactors, and um, they treat, in the beginning, people suffering from adenoid cystic carcinoma of the parotid, of the parotid gland. And um, they had a lot of uh, severe side effects because they could not concentrate the bone in a specific cancer uh, compartment. And therefore, I do think if we can uh, uh, combine magnetic drug targeting, which I will show you then, uh, using iron oxide nanoparticles combining with uh, boron, we can selectively deposit bore, boron into tumor tissue. Now, what is the aim? If you have a patient suffering from cancer, you're doing magnetic drug targeting. That means you do an intralateral application of iron oxide nanoparticles combined with some chemotherapeutic agent, or in this term then with boron, and then you can focus this, first of all, the particles and the respective boron into the cancer tissue, and if you do then a selective radiation, you have an harm in the body where, the, where, the cancer, where, where cancer is, and there you have a selective cancer treatment modality in our, in our opinion. Um, yeah. There you see we did um, synthesize dextran coated iron oxide nanoparticles. We did the XRD. We see the crystal structure. There was um, we could produce this particle um, um, uh, in our lab, and uh, we could re redo them in the same uh, um, margins uh, described before. And um, what is now magnetic drug targeting? Magnetic drug targeting is you can. Um, manipulate iron oxide nanoparticles with external magnetic fields like uh, shown here. And what we are doing in animal studies is that uh, if you do this an electromagnet, for example, here, you uh, turn off, uh, you turn on the external magnetic field, then you do have a concentration of the particles where the magnet is, and then if you do switch it off, the particles dissolve in the medium. So you don't have an agglomeration, this is very important, and you do have a fluid, uh, you don't have a blockage of the fluid, uh, this is important because otherwise you get uh, agglomeration, thrombi, and, and um, uh, adverse side effects due to the application of these particles. 
what I said before is we do synthesize these ionox and particles. Uh, momentarily, we do apply them in, in rabbits. We do, um, they have um, a squamous cell carcinoma. It's a very aggressive uh, uh, cancer. Um, and uh, after a certain period of after two to three weeks uh, implanting this uh, cancer, we do apply these uh, ionox and nanoparticles loaded with MTU, with methoxanthrone, um, intraarterially and placing an external magnetic field and to concentrate this uh, particles into uh, tumor tissue. This is already proven. I showed you last uh, year also the results um, with the published 2013 in nanomedicine in a worldwide larger study using magnetic uh, nanoparticles bound to mitosandrone. And what you can gain is uh, with one application of uh, iron oxide nanoparticles containing 5 or only 10% of the regular systemic dose, we could achieve complete tumor remissions. And uh, this is uh, with out um, relevant uh, negative side effects. Um, so therefore, this is proven that we can treat sophistically um, cancer with iron oxide nanoparticles using external magnetic fields. Uh, and comparable to intravenous application, we have this also uh, spoken today. If you do apply systemic chemotherapy, this is uh, in eight animals done, regular systemic chemotherapy, and you do uh, sacrifice them after the application, you see that um, you reach only, you, you gain only 1% or less than 1% in the respective tumor tissue, and most of the uh, chemotherapeutic agent is uh, agglomerated in liver and kidney and other organs. But if you do magnetic drug targeting, that means the particles combined with chemotherapeutic agent and external magnetic fields, you achieve up to 57% detectable um, chemotherapeutic agent in the tumor region. And comparable there, also the particles are. Um, enriched in the tumor tissue. Now, this is uh, just a preface for our pilot experiments. What we could gain is um, we can achieve with this method approximately 350 ppm iron into the cancer tissue. This is proven already. And um, what is the minimum acquired dosage of boron you do need uh, to treat sophisticated cancer? This is about 2 ppm. So therefore, we calculated what we have to do. Um, so if we do have a concentration of 350 ppm uh, iron into the in cancer, we have to have a ratio of about 57% bore to iron payload to have with our system a sophisticated enrichment of boron into cancer tissue. Um, so. As I mentioned before, we do have a unit to synthesize these particles. We did start now to synthesize iron, uh, iron oxide particles bound to uh, boron. And you see here, this is, a, this is a iron oxide particles with an albumin layer. And we did um, connected boron to these um, uh, new synthesized particles. And what we could see here is that um, if we do apply the particles or the particle with boron or the or poor boron, there is no toxicity without radi radiation. That means the particles themselves are not toxic to uh, the cells uh, where we did apply. Now, what you did now is um, in Garching, where the reactor is, we did this um, irradiation experiments. And um, what we did is the following. We uh, had um, several layers of agarose here, and uh, we did measure the flux density of uh, the <coughs> neutron flux density in a different layer, in dependence on the depth to this agarose model. And we implanted this in a rat scale base. And uh, what we could sh show is in these pilot experiments that the attenuation of uh, the flux density uh, was not altered due to the spions. Here you see here the yellow um, uh, dots are with blank chill. Um, and uh, due to the spions, the flux density of the neutron are not affected. Um, and on the other side, we did show also here that uh, with a different arrangement, that means also with the skull base, there was no changing in the attenuation of the flux density. This is very important to know this in advance uh, when you do these experiments. Uh, but uh, taken into calculation, derived from these uh, flux density attenuation data, we calculated if you do use only pure agarose, 
the um, Newton flux um, is in a range about one uh, dose gray. If you do then add nitrogen to simulate uh, the biological tissue, uh, you have an increase uh, of this flux density in the, in the tissue. And if you then add boron, then you have a thousand-fold increase of flux density in the respective tissue. Then we um, try to uh, do an irradiation experiments from these cells, uh, human colon cancer cells, and we could show there that uh, in these pilot experiments there were no alteration with um, neutron flux alone without boron, and um, in these uh, spheroids we could not uh, show any significant difference in dependence on time. And um, to come to a conclusion for these pilot experiments, we are this ongoing project. I hope that they will give you next time more detailed information. We could show that um, neutron beam attenuation was not affected by the spions. Um, in accordance with uh, magnetic drug targeting, as I mentioned before, we could um, calculate the, uh, according to this attenuation um, um, data a thousandfold higher dose depos deposition than in native tissue. Uh, and um, we could also show that boron-containing spions are not toxic without radiation. This is very important. And um, we do think uh, that uh, with magnetic drug targeting, we can selectively deposit boron at high concentration and therefore enhance the boon neutron capture therapy. Furthermore, uh, improving particle synthesis uh, has to be done, of course. Um, and um, we do develop now a 3D cell culture model to estimate the biological outcome. And this was done by, with cold um, sources. We try now to do this with uh, uh, hot neutron sources at the, at the reactor. Yeah, I would like to thank the funder of these uh, um, studies, of these preliminary pilot studies, and of course my team who is doing main of the, the main part of the work. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for this very nice introduction into this work. Um, questions from the audience? Radlish, please. Um, great work. Uh, question on how you're going to get the boron and the iron out after you do the treatment. Are you thinking about using the magnet to actually pull it to the surface or pull it to a location where it can then later be resected? Or are you just letting it break down and hopefully it will come out another way? Actually, we did show that um, in the previously uh, slides that, of course, there's a metabolism of uh, iron oxide uh, after a certain period of time. But I think if you can really selectively concentrate the boron iron uh, carrier system, let me say, in, the, in cancer, hopefully it will stay there. And um, I don't think that we have um, a high um, metabolism due to the fact that we have most of the particles with the boron concentrated in the tumor tissue. I think so. I hope so. Because, you know, it's a pilot experience. We do have some parallel, uh, hopefully next year. Uh, you know, the problem is also, it's not only pilot experience, because we do have to have time at the reactor. You know, this is a very competitive uh, uh, organization there. And uh, these are pilot experience, but I hope next year I will give you some more details. I'm fearing now. That's okay. Uh, well, <laughs> no, no, no. We were just yeah, talked before. Really challenging work. Uh, uh, can you comment on the epi need for epithermal beams, really, and the, the dangers of uh, you know, beam burning, really, and how the depth yeah. of which the neutron beams can actually penetrate into the tissue? To be honest with you, since we are really in the very beginning, I can't give you a detailed uh, 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 answer to this. We did use a prompt gamma activation analysis, PGAA, and um, from all what I know at the moment is that there were no severe negative side effects seen only by this neutron flux, uh, neutron irradiation, what I've heard. But you know, the problem is um, there are only limited data about this. Yeah, and the, the other issue, I, I suppose, from the point of view of translation is the difficulty of uh, reactor a access, and that's one of the major impediments today to this technology. You know, but the fact is, in Germany, we had a big discussion about the reactor, and, it, uh, and when they opened it, 
they said we can cure with neutron beam therapy people suffering from cancer. They have no other solutions. And they treated in, in Munich about 400 people suffering from cancer, from severe cancer and residues, and they did gain a prolongation in, in the in lifetime of this patient. And I think you're right. Let me say, in the future, maybe we have a sophisticated application of these particles and this method. We have to think about how the procedure will be and how uh, yeah, easily will be the access to such a uh, infrastructure we need for, for neutron uh, therapy. I have one more to be greedy, and that's the question of the aggregation following the magnetic field application, whether you've magnetized the particles such they do aggregate. Yeah. In the tumor tissue. Yeah.